Well, welcome to Huskies Hockey Insider Podcast. I'm, I'm Mick Hatton from The Rink Live, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be joined by, by Jason Bryant, who is the new public address announcer for St. Cloud State uh, Men's Hockey. Jason, how are you doing today? Pretty good, pretty good, pretty excited, and the news has been, uh, once it got out there, I mean, I was over overwhelmed with uh, already just the social media uh, outreach from Huskies hockey fans, so uh Looks like it's uh it's it's not gonna sneak up on anybody, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think you're uh at Jason M. Bryant. I, I think is uh is your handle on Twitter for, for people that uh, maybe want to follow you there. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm there on Instagram. That's pretty much where I, I pretty much live on Twitter. Uh if you're following me on Instagram, you're gonna get it's gonna be really disappointing because it's just pictures of of my kids and maybe my my affinity for for sneakers that's basically what you're going to get over on instagram maybe some weird world travels because i do travel the world for wrestling so uh that you know twitter is where 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 you'll get my uh my thoughts pretty frequently so that's uh if you want to social media follow that's where i'm at at jason m bryant awesome well let's uh let's talk about uh how, how this kind of all came about uh you know uh, chuck clausen had, had been the public address announcer for the last 32 years for for the Huskies and it decided to to retire after last season. He went into the season with, with that in mind and uh, he has done that. Uh, how, how did uh, you find out, I guess, about the opening and, and what was the process, uh, you know, to, to, to getting this gig? Yeah, it was kind of strange because I'm, I'm not a stranger to St. Cloud State sports. So I, I've been covering the sport of wrestling. Of course, the, if you read the press release, that's pretty much where most of my resume sits, at least in the last uh, 20 years, but I've been on the, on a microphone since I was 14 years old. I started doing high school baseball when I was a freshman in high school uh, back home in, in Virginia. And I have to cl- clarify that that is the state that is not the iron range. <laughs> so uh, when I moved to Minnesota, that's one thing I had to clarify here from Virginia. Oh, iron range. No, the state like the beach. So uh, yeah, I've been, been behind a mic since I was, since I was a freshman in high school, I've always wanted to be in sports broadcasting, sports journalism, and I've pretty much done that. But I've been a PA announcer for, for a very long time, broadcaster journalist. So a lot of the stuff that you do on a day-to-day basis with, with hockey, I've been doing with wrestling for a long time. And that started out of a dorm room at, at Old Dominion University where I, where I went to college and a radio show in, in Hampton, Virginia. But this position uh, opened up, when it, when it opened up, I wasn't aware of it right away. Uh, I was in a public address announcers Facebook group where people are, you know, talk about jobs. They talk about the industry. It's, you know, there's a little bit of a, Hey, here's, here's my, my lineups from insert event here, or people looking for tips. And it's kind of a community of PA announcers. There's just your local level middle school, little league announcer to there's professional PA announcers in there too. So uh, there there's, and I saw it pop up and it's like, you know, I, I wasn't familiar with, uh, with Chuck, to be honest with you, because I have oh, I've, to my life, I've only been to one <laughs> collegiate hockey game. And that was when I lived in Colorado Springs. And that was uh, it was those Gophers against Colorado College. So that was the extent of my in-person college hockey experience. But I watched plenty of it on TV, which is a benefit of living in Minnesota. College hockey, even if you're not you know a hockey lifer, you can't miss it uh, here on TV. So that's a plus. But I saw it out there and I I was just kind of thinking about it. I, I looked at looked at my I saw the schedule was out and I'm like, I'm looking at the dates. I'm like, you know what? Let me give it a shot. So Andrew Melro, the SID, I had actually worked with him when he was at University of Missouri as a wrestling contact. So it was a name uh, that I was familiar with. And I, I went to the website, I saw the auditions page uh, and I'm like, you know what, I'll just throw my name in there. And, you know, sent, you know, sent the, uh, the reads in, had some stuff from the NCAA because I've announced the last several NCAA championships at division one and division three. And I've also been the NAI PA announcer for their championships. And, you know, I had the NCAA reads. So the basic, there's a lot more to being a PA announcer than just, you know, starting lineups and in, in goal scoring in this case, but a lot of reads had that stuff there, threw it out there. And I'd followed up with Andrew with an email going, Hey, uh, kind of odd getting a hockey email from me because he was going to reach out and try to see uh, what, what I could do as far as promoting the wrestling program. Cause I've got a number of podcasts and such. And uh, St. Cloud state is a dominant force in division two wrestling. And matter of fact, they actually hold the NCAA record across all divisions for most consecutive dual meet wins. So uh, a lot of, a lot of good stuff that Steve Costanza and Brady Wilson are doing there, but that was the, the thing I got the, uh, I got a call back for or an email back for round two going, Hey, can you come out and do an in-person audition? I did. I walked into the Herb Brooks national hockey center for the first time, uh, not the first time I'd seen the building. You know, I've been to Hallenbeck hall for wrestling events a couple of times in the past. I've got family that lives in, in Avon. My niece and nephew graduated from, uh, from Albany. So I've, I'm familiar with the area. It's about an hour from, from where I live. So I uh, walked in there and I was pretty impressed with the facilities right away. And I was, it was kind of, kind of daunting to be honest with you, because it's been a long time since I worked in hockey. 
And that was pretty much the pro process. I, I gave him a heads up about, you know, some scheduling things that may, may arise. And uh, that was, I was pretty transparent with that. And then I got the, got the call back. I was actually picking up my kids from camp and I was in the car with my wife and I had it plugged in and I saw Andrew's number pop up on the, you know, got those the screen display and, and the, we just bought a new car. And I was like, I looked at it and I was like, that's St. Cloud State. My wife's like, oh, answer it, answer it. And there was the offer. And I'm like, yeah, we'll do it. So that's pretty much the short version of how it happened. That's actually probably the long version of how it happened too. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, you know, in, during the course of the, you know, in, in house, uh, you know, when, when you actually got to the arena and you, and, and you did, uh, you know, some, some things there, what, would they have you kind of read or, you know, do, do uh, over the, uh, you know, public address, uh, you know, system. I had a mock starting lineup, had some, some, typical game day operation stuff, you know, the, the sponsor read the starting lineup presented by, and then I think there was the, uh, the boys and girls club sponsorship read or what they do, the game promotions and things like that, which, you know, as, as people, as I mentioned to earlier, there's a lot more of that in PA announcing than there is, you know, the goals in the starting lineups. So those are things that, that you get to do uh, constantly. And you just kind of make sure that you don't screw those up. Cause those are the ones the sponsors are more worried about. You know, there's, I do a lot of international wrestling. So the foreign names, that is something I'm comfortable with. Doesn't mean you don't screw them up from time to time. You just roll with me like, okay. Uh, the only guy that's going to know that is him and maybe his parents. So again, I, I try to get every single name, right. There's a lot of research that goes into it. You know, I have to do 900 names uh, at the world championships each year, about 300 at the Olympic games. So uh, it's not, I'm not worried about butchering names. I'm worried about butchering sponsor reads. That's the one thing it's like, you don't want to screw those up. So there was those. And then there was the reads. It was, and it wasn't that long of a, uh, of an audition. I know they had a lot of people that came through and I was honestly, I was kind of floored uh, that I did, got it because again, I'm, I'm coming into a world that I know a little bit about. I'm not a, I'm not a hockey, you know, novice. I mean, I worked for the, the Hampton Roads Ad admirals of the East coast hockey league back when I was in college as a broadcast intern. So I quite literally got a crash course in hockey. Uh, I've always been a fan of slap shot. I quote it frequently anyway, uh, my, much to my wife's behest. Cause she does, she doesn't really like the language in said movie, but uh, I enjoyed it in college. I actually have it, have a Charlestown chiefs Jersey. I've got a couple, a couple jerseys uh, that I used to you know collect. So uh, I was a fan of the expansion team. So like in like pro hockey comes around, I was a fan of the San Jose sharks when they came in the league, the Tampa Bay lightning, Florida Panthers. That was really when I was getting in, in the hockey, you know, watching the ECHL, which is a, uh, a lot of fights in that league. John Brophy was a legendary coach for the Admirals and uh, got a chance to, to work with him and know him a little bit. And boy, that's an interesting guy. Uh, may he rest in peace. But uh, yeah, so my, my hockey background is, is you know, it's it's not robust by any stretch of imagination, but I, I do watch the Stanley Cup playoffs quite frequently. I watch, I'll find myself stopping on games. I'll look at, look at games, trying to, trying to pull for the wild because I am not a native. Yeah. Uh, so I'm still trying to get over that whole nickname. Um, I, I still think that they should have given the, when they moved that team to Dallas, they should have called them the North Stars, or excuse me, called them the Lone Stars and brought the North Stars name, kept it Minnesota. But that's a whole nother conversation entirely. So, see, uh, yeah. it's not just me then. Yeah, see, I, 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 I've actually had this conversation. Uh, believe it or not, uh, Lou Nanny had a, had a book on the North Stars that uh, he he wrote, and I went and I, I I saw him. He did a book signing up here in St. Cloud. This several years ago or whatever, and I I, I said to him, I, I said, you know, one of the, one of the things for, you know for me, I, I appreciate that the NHL's back, but I said for a guy like me that grew up in in this state, uh, I said I wish they would have kept the North Stars name, and it, and he's like, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, it, it's, and he he went on to say that uh, you know that that logo and the and the name actually, uh, you know, up in Canada and actually in North America gets used more than. Uh, you know, just about any anyone that's out there, um, which I thought was interesting. But uh, yeah, so I, I I told him I said, you know, I, I'm still a fan of the NHL. I'm glad the Wild are here, but I, I said I think I'd be a bigger fan if they were the North Stars again. So anyway, that, there's my little. I, I'm getting onto I'm getting onto the off ramp there with you. All right, that's 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 I will go on tangents too. So you want to go at sports tangents? I'm all, I, I do that. I mean, it's one of those like a squirrel, you know, one of those things. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, the 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 opportunity. And one thing I, I liked about it, and I'm in talking to my wife about this. So, you know, my my passion really is in, in college and Olympic sports, and you know, seeing especially hockey. I feel like college hockey has a lot of similarities to college wrestling, and that is really where I live a lot of my world 
is you've got it's it's not the most prolific sport in terms of its coverage you fight for coverage when it's on tv everybody talks about it you've got different streaming contracts and different streaming services to watch your favorite teams or watch the best games and such and we we have that in wrestling you also find a very passionate fan base and those fan bases typically like to battle on social media and on message boards so this is walking into to, to hockey twitter as I was, I was warned earlier today by some st cloud state faithful careful hockey twitter is like i have a deal with wrestling twitter okay this is i'm, I'm ready for this so uh but i just the passion with the fan bases is great uh, you know i compare st cloud state hockey's fan base from just what i've seen you know just being you know an, an hour away paying attention to it knowing about uh, the unique, you know, the the unique structure of Division One college hockey, it, you know, it's a lot like the Iowa, Oklahoma State, Penn State battles on the message boards. I know that mm. uh, that team in Grand Forks and in, in the Saint Cloud State schools, like uh, is Saint Cloud State likes to like to like the jaw. So mm. I'm I'm well aware of this. So it, it really there's a lot of similarities. I was trying to make a joke yesterday that you know wrestlers are just you know hockey players that sticks or something like, or something to that i can't quite get that one down i'll figure that one out soon maybe yes. maybe hockey players or, or wrestlers wearing skates with sticks i don't know but it's uh, a lot of similarities with the mentality what it takes to be a a, a hard working hockey player the one difference is is there is a professional you know outlet for for pro hockey whereas in in, in wrestling college is one of the top ones and then you you've got a handful of people to get a chance to wrestle at the next level at the world championships and the olympics so uh, a lot of a lot of niche sport kind of feel there. A lot of passionate, diehard fan base. So uh, the similarities in the fan bases is something that uh, that I'm actually really looking forward to because you know having worked in hockey a little bit and seeing you know some of the gritty minor league travel stories and these guys, the journeymen that end up in you know the the bus leagues as they call them, and then seeing the guys coming through juniors and then seeing just the pro level. I mean, my my friends' kids are playing hockey up here, and it's like. It's not something I grew up around as far as like the youth hockey level. So I really, you know, go to a tournament uh, or go somewhere in a hotel up in, up in, you know, up in Brainerd or something like that. And there's hockey teams all staying in the hotels at tournaments and stuff. It's just, it's like what I'm used to with wrestling. So uh, just, you know, like I said, replace the singlet with some, some pucks, some sticks and some skates. And, you know, I think the, the level of Bush light is probably comparable. So we're good there. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned uh you know working in, in the echl what uh what all did you do i guess in, in in your position uh you know working for for the admirals out there so that was my first semester actually started my first semester in college and i remember seeing the app there was a, a flyer at, and i was a communications major and i'd already worked for a newspaper i was working at a daily newspaper in high school snagging phones i was the guy that you would call the scores into and then i eventually was a page designer copy editor i was i was basically the beat writer for high school wrestling did covered high school football basically i was kind of a you know they put i was working the desk but they would also send me out on assignments and such but uh when uh, the admiral's opportunity opened up i talked to my advisor and he kind of steer said kind of steered me away from it because they usually don't do internships for first semester freshmen well i had called it was tom grace was the the play-by-play -play guy at the time and it was uh, i can't remember the radio station because they've changed the call letters so many different times i think it was on 850 which then was WTAR, if I'm not mistaken. And I was a broadcast intern. So I sat next to him and, and the red whistle, Pat Shetler, who was, uh, you know, he was, he reffed in the NHL for a long time. I think he's still the, the play by uh, the color commentator for the admirals. And I sat there and I was basically sat between uh, Marie booze, who was the main statistician, me, and then the broadcasters. And I'm feeding stuff back and forth and uh, running the, we had to used to, we used to call tick uh, sports ticker to get the updates, getting the scores from the ECHL, running them down to the owner's box, which was right on the, right on the glass with uh, then it was a uh, uh, Mark Garcia and Paige Johnson owed the team and uh, B Blake Cullen before and after. So in that time, it was uh, it was a really exciting thing because I discovered hockey through uh, a neighbor down the street who, uh, you know, one of my next door neighbors, his uncle played for the old Hampton Gulls in the Southern Hockey League back in the mm -hmm. 70s. And I remember going home and turning on the TV and there was Sports Channel. And I think it was a I think it was a Flames Jets game. And I'm like, hockey's on TV. And then shortly thereafter, I went to an Admirals game and, and saw, you know, and it was it was old school, like not quite slap shot but uh, you know i got the experience of like okay fights are cool and then the game was so fast seeing it in person is so much different than seeing it on tv and so the opportunity to go went to the admirals games multiple times a buddy of mine had season tickets so 
it was about a 45 minute ride to get over to Norfolk from where I grew up. And so you get a chance to work with the team. Uh, you know, it was, it was an interesting experience as far as being a broadcast intern intern. So we weren't up in, up, up in the skybox where a lot of places do their broadcast now. Like I know in St. Louis, uh, where the blues, obviously everybody knows where the blues play, but the, uh, the broadcast purchase way up top, like on the sixth floor. Well, this is just kind of on the main level. So I got a pretty good, pretty good view of the ice and Norfolk scope seats about 9,000 at the time. It used to get loud and rowdy in there. And uh, then they went to the AHL, then back to the ECHL. I know it's not quite what it used to be, but uh, those games were wild. They were loud. Uh, that was not a great year as far as the team went. And then last road trip, we had a homestand and uh, just outside of the playoff race. And Tom Grace and I shook hands at the end of the last period and says, all right, well, we'll circle back when the season's over. And lo and behold, they won three games on the road, snuck into the playoffs as the number 16 team in the playoffs, upset the number one Peoria Rivermen, and then ran the table and won the league title. So um, I don't have a ring from that year for some reason. I still got to still still got to worry about that one. But uh, that was a, it was just a wild ride to see, you know, this this it was you really got infectious. Uh, I actually was home in Virginia two weeks ago and actually grabbed my Admirals jersey out of the closet. It's like I'm bringing this one back to Minnesota with me because it's mm-hmm. you know, now they're the Norfolk Admirals and they had that great run where they won almost 20 some games in a row a couple years ago when they were in the AHL, when they were, I believe, a Blackhawks affiliate it might have been the Tampa Bay Lightning. But, you know, way affiliations work. But uh, I wasn't really on the ice much. Matter of fact, I've only been on skates twice in my life, which I feel like is something I need to really rectify if I'm going to embrace this world of hockey, especially with the amount of frozen ponds in my neighborhood here over over the wintertime. But uh, it's it's a great sport and the opportunities there to really, you know, follow players like you know player Aaron Downey came through with the Admirals in time and there's the clip of him when he played for that team in Dallas with the one punch knockout and of course I've talked a lot about fights but uh you know Sebastian Charpentier was it was a, a goaltender he got called up to the Capitals which was kind of kind of weird because I really didn't like the Capitals but the Admirals were an affiliate so you kind of got to root for the guys that that pull up you know Victor Gervais uh, was a pretty solid player I think there was another uh, uh what was his name uh there was another goalie had one of the few goals in uh from a goalie position i think mark bernard was his name back in the day so the the admiral's op- opportunity was the experience to me was less about working for him but you know even the games i, I wasn't working because there was another intern and we split time and it was just get a chance to go to the scope and and sit there when i wasn't working and get you know get get the perspective you know right by the boards and then just the game day experience uh, of the sport is you know it's i hate to say it, it's like that band that you oh you gotta see them live well hockey's a sport you gotta see live so mm-hmm. I'm, you know, in that, that box where you sit and do PA for hockey, you are right there. So I'm really, really looking forward to getting that vantage point for the first time too. Cause, uh, and, and I've been told wear thick socks. Cause I, I forgot how cold some of these rinks are. Cause you know, we get a little bit of it when we're at the, uh, the NCAA championships for wrestling, where they still have the ice down and they have to put, you know, some buffer down. Then they put the yeah. mats down. You're like, Ooh, there's the ice. And you can feel it like uh, little Caesars arena in Detroit hosted us last year, a uh, tremendous place. And uh, that was you know, just one of the things up. Oh, yep. There's ice under here in St. Louis. Um, that's a big sheet of ice. They got a big floor down there. So, uh, you know, whatever that one's called, it used to be Scott trade. I think it's enterprise center now. So, uh, there's, there's always, there's always hockey somewhere where I go, whether or not it's the, the first thing on my mind, but every time I hear the blues, uh, arena play that, that anthem, I always think of the Hanson brothers listening to the song. So <laughs> hockey is quite frequently at the tip of my tongue, even though it's, it's not my first sport. Yeah. What, what, now, what are you doing for a living now? Uh, and, and, and where are you, where are you living right now? I'm in New Brighton. Uh, it's a, obviously a suburb of the Twin Cities on the north side, right off 694, about, uh, about 66 miles, I think, door to door from the Herb Brooks National Hockey Center. I moved here initially for, to Minnesota in 2008, 2009 to work for a company that Jay Robinson, the former uh, Minnesota wrestling coach, had started up uh, kind of like a sports center for college wrestling. That startup kind of flopped after a year in the process met my wife proud minnesota native uh went to you work for usa wrestling for three years had a kid came back and you know minnesotans tend to move back but i've been working full-time in wrestling since 2004 been working my own business matt talk online since 2014 that was actually the website i'd started in college off the radio show that i'd started in high school called matt talk and it started as a virginia high school site back then so if anybody follows wrestling in minnesota they know the guillotine is kind of the the minnesota version of that Yep. And, uh, you know, basically kind of carved out a career for myself in wrestling, worked for the National Wrestling Coaches Association, running their their massive website, Intermat at the time, did that for three years, then here to Minnesota, then to USA Wrestling to work for the national governing body, 
uh, and, and operate their social media and their website, do a lot of, you know, really instituted their their live streaming uh, component, which uh, hockey fans are well aware of that, uh, the com- what you see now with uh, the, the live streaming things, you know, flow hockey is, is, is prominent in the sport. Well, flow wrestling is what we, we work with in wrestling. And uh, I was kind of on the ground floor of building our streaming, which then got ended up uh, what you see on flow sports really is kind of a lot of it started with USA wrestling. So uh, and, and the work there. So I've been working in wrestling full time uh, with the studio you see around me. It's my broadcast studio slash speakeasy. So uh, I got the, got a bar behind me that I can sit down and have guests in. I've got the got the lighting rigs. I got, of course, got all my all my gear from various sporting events and Olympic games and stuff. There's nothing else in the house that's mine on the walls except for this room. So one thing that I'm excited about about this is it's not wrestling. It's local. Uh, it's it's part of being part of the community here because I've been here almost been back almost ten years and. I really don't have roots here. Excuse me, roots, as we as we say here. Uh, it's it's something that's get get gets me part of the community, gets me part of this this state of hockey that we live in. That's not just the wild motto. It's something that's true. I like to use this as a land of ten thousand wrestlers too, because there's a lot of wrestlers and hockey players here. So mm-hmm. you can't throw a rock and and you know not hit a wrestler or a hockey player. And if you do hit one, duck. Uh, so it's something that, you know, I've got the opportunity to be part of this part of the state. You know, I'm, I love living here. This is, this is the best place. As a matter of fact, where I live right now is the longest I've ever lived in one spot in my entire life. Minnesota is my home. Uh, you know, I've, I've embraced the wrestling side of it. Now it's time to embrace the rest of it. I finally caught a walleye after such a long time up in, um, Mille Lacs. My father-in-law's made fun of me for almost a decade for not being able to catch one, but I finally did. And, uh, it's one of those things that uh, this is a great place. Hockey's a great part of that. And, you know, that 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 hockey day where you look at it's like, well, there's an outdoor rink in Elk River. This thing is awesome. So uh, it's not just uh, it's not just the the pro side of things, the high school side of things. I'm really looking forward to to, you know, learning more about the the sport of college hockey. I mean, it's I, I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm it's going to be a learning curve for me, too. So, I mean, I've been put in pressure situations. I'm not worried about that. I'm just just worried about learning the sport. That's the one thing. And I've done a lot of research. A lot of, a lot of those media guides been uh, looking at old Tom Nelson's old notes and now uh, Andrew's old notes. And it's uh, it's one of these things that uh, I'm excited for. It's a little, it's got me a little bit nervous, but uh, you know, I get butterflies every time I, I start a tournament anyway. So nothing's going to be new there, but I'm, I'm really excited for the opportunity. Speaking of butterflies. No, uh, no. Is it three Olympics that you've been, that you've worked at? Yeah, I worked the first one for USA Wrestling and their media team as a journalist. And then the last two, I've served as the English PA announcer for wrestling in the venue. So uh, Rio and Tokyo have been, uh, if you were watching wrestling and you could hear the voice in the arena in English, that was me. What, uh, well, just describe what what that experience, uh, what those experiences have been like, uh, you know, being at the Olympics. Obviously, I mean, that's that's one of the the ultimate uh, sporting events uh, to be a part of. Uh, Mm -hmm. What's that been like for you? It's very regimented because it is not free flowing. Now, a couple mm-hmm. things you get to do when you do your, you know, in wrestling, I do the match commentary as it goes. So I'll, you know, usually there'll be multiple mats going on at a time. So you can go, you can bounce from mat to mat to mat, giving updates on what's going on. But everything that's read, you know, protocol is their favorite word. So if it's on the sheet, it's got to be cleared and approved. So medal ceremony, the wording is exactly right. You don't tweak or ad lib that. Or if you do, you have to tell them, well beforehand hey I, during rehearsal hey i need to we need to change this and they have to check to see if they're allowed to do it with protocol mm-hmm. uh, but it's it's high pressure and it's also very emotional because you know in the sport of wrestling usually you know it's a close-knit community so you know somebody you know people like helen marulis won the olympic gold medal and became the first american woman to win a gold in freestyle wrestling in 2016 and i'd known her since she was 16 years old and she's stepping up to the, the top of the podium and you're about to say, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of the United States of America. And I'm holding back tears because it is just a powerful moment. What's going on right now is history. Mm-hmm. So there's 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 that part of it, the pressure part of it. And this is a part of, you know, you this is one thing. You say the wrong thing. You say the wrong country in the wrong way. Bye. You're done. Like they sit you down. You are not. You, you, thank you. Have a nice day. You know, it's 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 a lot of pressure in that regard. Tokyo is a little different because. Uh, it was a lot more laid back, but there was also really no fans there. The only people in the buildings were the training partners and the teams there because yeah. they were still with the COVID stuff. So that was a little bit more free flowing. But at the same point, it was you didn't get that full crowd experience. So one thing I am looking forward to to Paris, should I get Paris? I did work the 2017 Worlds in Paris and the people that ran their world championships there that year were amazing. So I'm looking forward to getting that opportunity. We're two years out, but uh, there it is a pressure cooker because it's, you know, it is make sure you get it right. You know, it's, 
do you know but again my wife kind of told me right before i announced my first world championships run going to the airport and i'm just like kind of you know you know i'm finally getting this type of opportunity she's like what are you worried about she's like, screwing up because no, no no do your best and that's the one thing i you know i'm gonna have to i, I try to do everywhere is that you know mistakes are gonna happen just depends on how many people hear it <laughs> you know how many people uh you know bust your chops about it but ultimately just do your best. And that's the one thing I'm going to try to bring to, to this job, just like I do every single time when, when the NCAA championships are out there, the world championship with the Olympics, I tell, you know, in, in the opportunity that I announce three different levels of college wrestling, the kid that wins the NAIA championship at 125 pounds is going to get the exact same response, the exact same call as the kid who wins 125 pounds at the division one national championships in front of 18,000 people. The championship experience is what I'm trying to bring for wrestling. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and, for, for people that are curious on what's going to happen. I know uh, the woo thing, you know, that's one, one of the first questions I got. And I, I, I kind of looked up some stuff about, about Chuck and, and, you know, 32 years, man, that's, it's kind of hard to just come in and, you know, I'm not here to just do what Chuck did because what he did is there is, is a local guy is a passionate guy. He made it his craft, his, his passion. And I have to learn that. And it's, that's not going to happen over, uh, you know, one day, it's not going to happen over 32 minutes. It's may not happen over 32 games. It's something I'm going to have to grow with in this, this position. I'm going to have to grow with the, the program and the university. So it's something I'm looking forward to. And, you know, like I said, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do my best, just like I do with the Olympics, just like I do with the NCAA championships or, or the dual meet between Augsburg and Wartburg, the battle of the Bergs or wherever I get called into to, to announce at Madison Square Garden or Hulu Theater. I mean, I've been in some big venues. I've been in some pressure cooker situations, but I'm going into a world that uh, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm an outsider, but I'm trying not, I'm, I don't want to be, but uh, you know, I guess a little grace, a little bit of a little bit of a, Hey, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not asking for, 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 forgiveness before i even start but it's something that's going through my mind just how to how to make this my own but also uh, it, it's probably going to take me a little bit to figure out where my groove is with hockey in terms of how how we're calling the game experience and how it w- works with with the game day operations and such so uh, you know the woo was uniquely chucks my friend john peterson who did uh broadcasting for uh st cloud state wrestling for a number of years kind of told me since they've had a guy up there that's has is beloved and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of hard following that. It's like, you know, whoever followed Dean Smith coaching at North Carolina basketball is, you know, you're, you're constantly going to be compared to Dean Smith. I get that. I'm, you know, I'm ready for that, but, um, I'm looking forward to try to try to get a hold of Chuck and, and kind of, you know, pick his ear a little bit. I haven't had a chance to do that yet, but it's on my to-do list. And I'm just curious on what knowledge I can, I can glean from him and, and, you know, something, uh, you know, there's there's things that I've done with uh, that that I kind of pay homage to other announcers in the wrestling world, uh, whether or not I I do that with with Chuck I don't know yet because again I never heard him in, in a game day opera uh, game day situation so I know that uh, you know he laid the groundwork for everybody's going to come after him because you know there's going to be somebody's going to come after me there's somebody going to come after me them there's going to be it's it's going to be a line because hockey's not going anywhere from St Cloud State it is it is a great sport it's put this school on the map I mean it's a national brand when it comes to this thing. Uh, you know, I know, I know him through wrestling first, but, uh, you know, you look at, oh, St. Cloud State. Yeah, that's, you know, you see him at the top of the polls, you see him in the frozen four and competing for national championships. And I think lastly, that's one thing that was also kind of drew me to it is I went to a, a mid-major school uh, in division one that was always kind of, you know, it's one of those conferences that were overlooked. And one thing I love about small college sports and, you know, the non-power five stuff is how hard they have to work to get that exposure. And the fact that St. Cloud State is a Division II institution that competes at the highest level in a sport like ice hockey is, you know, it speaks to how much they have to work. You know, there's there's a little bit of, you know, they're behind the, the funding when it comes to competing against schools that really put a lot of money into this. And, you know, a Power 5 school versus St. Cloud State, you look at it on paper, well, there should be no comparison, but there is a comparison. And when St. Cloud State is beating those big power five schools in a sport like this. It just shows how hard that this program, the, the university, the coaching staff, the players, just the tradition of it that exists there works. And that's something that really drew me to it as well as, you know, working hard and, you know, being the little guy, that's not the little guy. They're the big dog, no pun intended. <laughs> you're uh, you were mentioning uh, you, you've got kids. Uh, are, are they involved in sports then? Uh, what, 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 you know, how old are they? Got a uh, fifth grader and a first grader, so a ten-year-old and a six-year-old. They're the, the closest thing they're involved to in sports right now is their middle names or Olympic cities. So uh, <laughs> Lucy is born in 2012. Her middle name is London. Ruby was born in 2016. Her 
Her middle name is Rio. Uh, we're, my wife was a college softball player at Bethel here in the cities. So uh, getting them into sports is is a it's a slower process. We're waiting to see what they get interested in first. I know that, that they play a little bit of soccer just, you know, because there's the kids and their friends and their classes play it. But uh, I'm not a soccer guy, even though I'm going to a Minnesota United game for the first time this coming weekend. Go figure. And, uh, you know, whatever sports come to them, come to them. Uh, I, I was a pretty terrible athlete. I like I played a lot of sports growing up, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to be that crazy sports dad because wrestling dad. Yeah, I've been around a lot of wrestling dads and wrestling moms, and I'm pretty sure some of the some of our hockey parents kind of share that uh, mm-hmm. share that kind of mantra a little bit. So I'm just going to let my kids figure out what they want to do if if they want to get into sports. Thankfully, I know a lot of people here that uh, that are a lot better at coaching than I am. So you know, if that wrestling thing comes around, I know several Olympians that live in the neighborhood that are that are pretty easy if they want to play softball. My wife has that, and then there's. You know, we got a great sports culture here in Minnesota, whether it be whether whatever you want to do, we've got it covered. So uh, if they if they get in the sports, great. If not, I'm not worried about it. Awesome. Well, Jason, thanks so much for taking some time and then, you know, get, get getting, you know, people uh, get I wanted to give people a little bit of a chance to get to know you a little bit. To get, let them know uh, your background a little bit. And and uh, I, I really appreciate you taking a little bit of time here. I, uh, the big announcement came out uh, yesterday. And uh, so I just want to thank you so much and uh, wish you all the best of luck here in your new position with the, with the Huskies. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, uh, it's I'm looking at October 1st at St. Thomas to, to get my first glimpse of what the squad's going to look like. I'm pretty sure we might have a, you know, an exhibit of something going on at the, the Herb Brooks Center before that starts. But then that's the you know, first puck drops on the second in St. Cloud. And uh, that's that's going to be I mean, I'm already kind of getting, you know, my chest is pumping thinking about that already. So it's uh, it's it's it's. I mean, here we are coming up on August. Like next thing you know, it's going to be hockey season. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks so much again, and we wish you all the best. And this has been the Huskies Hockey Insider Podcast. I'm McCann from the Rink Live. Please check out all of our great content right here on our website.